Mixwrap's instrument window contains a number of useful parameters that let you combine, customize, and add effects to VST instruments. We'll open the instrument window by clicking the keyboard icon on an instrument track. First I'll add an instrument. I'm going to use a VST instrument, so I'll select VSTI in the category column, then I'll select Impulse. As you can see, the bottom of the instrument window opens up and shows us details. You can hide or display details by clicking on the little tab here that says Hide Details or Show Details. A unique feature of Mixcraft is that it allows you to stack and split multiple instruments on a single track, letting you create powerful multi-instruments similar to the layered combination patches you see on workstation keyboards. This is done by using the parameters on the instrument page. Let's go over them. The green checkbox right here simply enables or disables the instrument. This can come in handy when you're working with multiple instrument layers and you need the equivalent of a mute button. The synth column lets you choose which VST instrument you're going to use, and this is the same as choosing an instrument in the top right column over here. The preset column displays all the factory and user presets for the instrument you've chosen. The edit button displays the instrument's user interface for sound editing, creation, and saving. You can adjust all of the instrument's parameters from the interface, and when you're done, you can close it with the red X up here. The volume control, as you might have suspected, adjusts how loud the sound is. You can adjust this by clicking on it, and you can see you've got a slider here, or you can directly enter a value over here with the keyboard. The pan control lets you adjust the instrument's location in the stereo field, with negative values panning left and positive values panning right. The range parameter defines a specific region of the keyboard where the instrument will play. If you click the Set by MIDI keyboard checkbox, the first note played sets the lowest note of the range, and the second note played sets the highest note of the range. For example, I'm going to play a C2 followed by a C6. And now we've set the range for this sound. Once you've set the range, remember to uncheck this box, otherwise Mixcraft will think you're trying to set the range every time a key is struck. If the Set by Mouse box is checked, you can select a range by just clicking and dragging with the mouse on the keyboard on screen. The Reset button will revert the range to the entire MIDI note range. You can also select the MIDI note range using the start and end pop-up menus. Here's our bottom note, and our top note. Once you're happy with the note range for the instrument, click the red box in the upper right hand corner to close it. The transpose parameter lets you shift the input note range. You can either manually enter the number of steps in this field right here, or you can set the amount of transpose by octaves up or down right here. And be careful with this guy because it has a huge transpose range, so you might transpose right out of your virtual instrument's actual playable range. The velocity parameter lets you choose the velocity range an instrument responds to. For example, if you set the range from, say, 70 to 127, you will only hear the instrument when you play it pretty hard. You can hear me whacking the keyboard lightly in the background. But only when I whack it hard do we hear the sound. Keep in mind that the velocity parameter has no effect on the sound of the instrument itself. It just defines the velocity range when the instrument will play. The output parameter over here is meant to be used in conjunction with virtual instruments that have a multi-output feature. This is commonly seen in drum plugins. This particular plugin doesn't have that capability, but if you're using something that does, clicking on it would show the outputs and you could select which one to use. You can add additional instruments by clicking the down arrow right here where it says Select Synth. Here I've layered three sounds together. You can change the order of the sounds over here by clicking and dragging, but keep in mind this won't really make any difference in the sound, but it may help for organizational purposes. There are a lot of creative and useful ways to use instrument layering. One neat trick for creating large sounds is to use the same instrument and preset in two layers, and hard pan one all the way left and the other one all the way right, then tweak the tuning of one of them up or down just a little bit. This can create a really big sound that works well for pads or synth basses. In this example, I've used two instances of the ME80 Virtual Analog Synth, and in one of them, I've gone and I've tweaked up the pitch a little bit, and you can see I've panned them hard right and hard left. This gives us a really nice wide stereo pad sound. In this example, I've set up a pad sound that plays across the full velocity range of 0 to 127, and then I have a piano sound that comes in when I play hard from 100 to 127. In 
this example, I've split the keyboard with an upright bass sound in the low range of the keyboard and a pianissimo piano sound in the right-hand side of the keyboard.